I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. And our journey from today until November. And that is about the election. And I don't know if you must be under a rock if you don't know that we are getting ready for a November the 3rd election. And part of that is that there are Democratic Party, Republican Party, the Green Party, Aloha Party, all of these people come together in a group and work to elect their candidates. So today we're going to talk about the process of recruiting people, looking, making sure you've got all of the things in place so that the election goes smoothly in spite of what the orange man in the White House says. No one has proven that there was any fraud any place. So anyway, we have not had any fraud in Hawaii. Most of the time we had not enough people voting, but as we saw in the primary with the um, mail-in ballot for the first time, we had way, way more people than we've ever had since statehood. So today we're going to talk with Christopher Edwards and we're gonna talk about his job. He has just been elected to, okay, he'll tell you. <laughs> and his job is to make sure that we, everything is in place, that we recruit people, that we make sure that they understand what the process is and like so. So, Christopher, welcome. Hello. Hello. Uh, tell us now, Christopher Edwards, tell us about Christopher and what you were elected to, because I said you were elected to something, but... <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I was elected by the Democratic delegates on our island, Oahu, to be their representative at the state uh, standing committee uh, for the Democratic Party uh, of the state. And so I happily uh, work alongside uh, my colleague, Lemomi Khan, uh, to disseminate information to the, the party representatives for Oahu County uh, about the goings on of the standing committee and the, the, what the party's doing. Uh, on behalf of the election and the party itself uh, so that they know and we can help organize to assist with the party and the party's functions on our island and for the candidates who are running uh, and for the community as well as um, what the party's doing on other islands to assist and, and thinking a little bit about getting the president elected as well, uh, a well, new now, president. Yeah, we, everybody, I'm sure that you know, unless you're under some rock, everybody knows that um, we as Democrats and just to let the audience know, I did vote for you. And um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, so, uh, but what parties do, and I have to believe this is what we do, what the Republicans do, the Green Party, all of them, is to work to get our candidates elected, not just the president, but all the way down the ballot. And I want to be sure that everybody that's listening vote all the way down the ballot. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. just vote for president and walk away. But you'll have the ballot. It's going to be mailed to you on October 16. You'll have it in front of you. Walk, work all the way down. So that's mayor. Also, president, vice president, um, and the uh, prosecutor, mm -hmm. and um, before we get to mayor, and the mayor, and all of the city council people, and and any legislators, legislators. exactly, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, but go all the way down. Don't leave anybody out. Everyone counts. Everyone counts because it takes all of those pieces to operate 
together in harmony to make the city work mm -hmm. or the island or the state or whatever we're doing. <laughs> so, <laughs> so tell us about Christopher. Uh, so I got started here in Hawaii uh, about four years ago. Uh, at first I was a, um, a human resources assistant and then after that, I worked in a bank. Uh, and following that, I worked at a private recruitment firm where I helped a lot of people find new jobs. So like all over the county, uh, I was helping people find jobs in Kapolei uh, and here in town, uh, in between. Um, trying to think if there was any, there was some windward jobs as well. And I had a lot of fun just getting to know people. That's kind of the big thing that I, um, I like doing is getting to know people, connecting them to other people, trying to play a uh, kind of ambassador and facilitator liaison even of like, they come to me, they say, these are the things that I'm interested in. And then I try and think of, well, who else can, is doing work like that, that can help you get to the next level of where you'd like to go? How can you learn the skills that will help you do what you'd like to do in the community next or in the workplace next? And so uh, that's the recruiter type work that I'd like that I bring into the community service and the political service work that I do as well, where my goal is to uh, connect new people to coming into the party, into the areas that they'd like to go, whether it's a caucus or a group inside the Democratic Party, because we do um, conversate an awful lot about the different priorities that the party has, when whether it's healthcare or uh, the economy or Native Hawaiian uh, issues. We have, uh, we have an agenda that's important to the community, and so I want to connect people to allow them to pursue those things and try and get those great ideas into our um, into our ears, so that we can then ask legislators to perform those duties uh, at the city or state level. Well, you mentioned, you know, working with the legislature. I noticed that, and, and I think I got this right. There were so many young people. Um, even with mayor, it was the two new people that won, that got the top votes. All of those people with all that, that we all know, did not get elected. Those that have been around for a while, we get the two newbies. And, and then you look at other races and across the country, so many new people, young people, what are we doing to attract young people? And I mean, because you can work, well, it used to be you could work the polls, but we don't have polls anymore. But it was from 16 on. So what are we doing to attract those young people to participate, to participate in government, to learn how government works? What are we doing for them? Well, I think young people are seeing other young people involved in politics and making an actual change and difference. And so many times in life, we really only pursue things after we've discovered that other people like us are also doing that. So whether that's other people from all the different structures uh, and how we structure our own feelings about ourselves. So whether we see other uh, black people doing something or we see other Asian people doing something or other young people or other rich people or other poor people, uh, people who are coming out of middle-class backgrounds and coming out of um, uh, lower middle-class backgrounds or, or even uh, lower. If we see people succeeding and coming from a stage where we were in our lives and making it and making a big difference in our government, I think that will lead to additional people doing it. And so the steps that we've taken to engage young people are starting to really bear fruit. So allowing 16 year olds to, vote, uh, to register to vote at the age of 16, you know, gets them excited for two years later when they can actually vote. Uh, when they see young people like, um, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez being so successful as like a 31 year old in Congress um, and really helping to push the narratives that make her um, 
constituents happy uh, and really push the country towards healthy situations for, for a lot of us, I think that will help people explore what they can do in civic engagement. And it doesn't have to be in elected politics. There's opportunities um, at the neighborhood board level here uh, to get involved and to make sure that you have a better understanding of the community and then can tell the city, this is what people in my community want and what we want you to do, uh, or whether it's through civic engagement organizations of which we have a great many and people should explore them because they can be quite successful uh, when you focus on uh, a need like affordable housing or uh, another need, you can really push forward and help the community. And so uh, young people are seeing success and they want to explore that success. Plus things have not been that great for young people uh, in the, the, the some of the, the big economic issues that have happened. Now we have this healthcare pandemic crisis that's really affecting our families, um, you know, state by state, town by town, neighborhood by neighborhood uh, in a really, really um, bad way. Uh, and then we saw the consequences of the, the Wall Street crisis uh, in, in 07, 08, 09. Uh, and, and we have had the, to deal with the consequences of the ending of the Cold War and the expansion of the, the global labor market in more of a free market way. And we've seen a lot of jobs leave to go to those places where uh, pay can be lower and corporations can still succeed. And so that's why we haven't seen the job growth that we would have liked and that we saw in the decades preceding, let's say 1990, when the Berlin Wall and all that came down, the Cold War ended. We haven't seen that growth because there's been so much growth for folks in other nations. And so we need to figure out ways like the Green New Deal that could quite successfully uh, bring a ton of jobs back to our nation. And now uh, two things. What are we doing for young people right here in Hawaii? Mm -hmm. And what is the party doing for them? Uh, how do you reach out to them and what is that? And then number two, explain to our audience what is the Green New Deal? Oh gosh, I don't know if I'm qualified <laughs> to describe the Green New Deal, um, but let's see about what we can talk about uh, with young Let's talk people. about so, what we're doing, what you are doing for young to reach out to young people now to participate, mm -hmm. let's say between now and November, and to participate in registering to vote, to help to get out the vote, to do all of these things. What are you doing for them, for that, that community? So young people here um, on our island are, need to be encouraged to vote and register to vote. And so it's a multi-step process that, and we've had a lot of success bringing opportunity to them. And now we just need to make sure they actually, you know, turn in their paperwork online at, uh, they can do it, you know, on the state's website uh, and make sure that they actually send in their ballots or, uh, or, or vote in person. Uh, and so what are we doing to, to help encourage that? There is a very interesting down ballot initiative on the county's uh, general election ballot this year. Uh, it's charter amendment number two. Uh, and what it does is it, its goal is to create a Honolulu uh, youth council or commission uh, where those folks who sit on the commission can really advocate on behalf of youth uh, in the city. And so what we're doing as a, as a county party or a county committee uh, for Oahu and the Democrats is we're reaching out to young people and trying to connect them to young candidates who are also in our race this year. And so we're really, really excited about this opportunity because we have a number of young candidates that we really want to get elected. Um, and okay. so- Now, uh, before we go too far, let's explain that a charter 
amendment is, well, the city and county is a corporation. That's number one. The entire island is a corporation. That's why it's called the city and county of Honolulu. Now, and all corporations have a charter by which they function. So all corporations have them. A charter amendment is a part of amending the charter by which the city operates. And what you're saying is the charter member number two mm -hmm. is the one that you want to support. Mm -hmm. Now, to get a charter on the ballot has to go through hearing after hearing after hearing and people testify for and against, and yes, we want it, no, we don't want it, and whatnot. So to get to be on the ballot means it has survived all of those steps. Now, now how do we, well, what do we do to make sure that everybody that votes understands that they need to vote for the charter amendment also? We have been uh, in discussions internally to figure out what methods do we want to utilize in order to inform the public? Because one thing we've definitely noticed is that when people don't know what they are voting on, they tend not to vote oh, at all. Yes. They'll just skip it. They'll be like, oh, I don't know what that is. I don't want to say yes or no. Um, you know, what benefit will that have for the city and the community. And we want them to know that the benefit of Charter Amendment 2 is that we give representatives to youthful people to be in City Hall and ask questions and advocate on behalf of youth in the city. And you know, youth are our future and we want them to be extremely successful. If we want to have great roads, we wanna have representatives who can push for that. If we want to have affordable housing for them, then we want to have representatives who will push for that. Uh, if they um, have an interest in, in climate change and making sure that the health of the air and the water and the soil is very good and we are missing that voice. And so that's what this charter amendment is for. It's to give voice to those who at the moment are voiceless uh, until they're 18 and they can vote and really influence um, our government in that particular manner. It gives also a great leadership opportunity to these young people to start learning about city government, to learn the levers and to figure out and organize to be successful at the campaigns that are of interest to them. And young people's perspective can be extremely helpful, youthful ideas, and not just young people always, but young ideas and new ideas that can change our government for the better are really the lifeblood of democracy. That and like actually voting uh, in our representative democracy. And so it's so important that you brought up earlier uh, that people need to vote not just for the president and then you know skip over everything else, but they need to vote uh, for all of these different representatives. And, and they should spend some time getting to know them if can too. Well, what about the uh, other charter amendments? Do you know the rest of them? How many there are? There are four. Uh, yes. Two of them have to do with the ethics commission. Uh, mm -hmm. One has to do with term limits for the prosecutor's office. And one is charter amendment number two that we'd like people to vote yes for. It's um, uh, to, to create this youth council and commission for the city. Now, I have to tell you the last time there was charter amendments on the ballot. I decided as a campaign of one to, to make a button that said uh, no on 15. Nothing else. No on 15. And everywhere I went, people would say, what is that? And then I would tell them it um uh, gets rid of the term limits for the mayor and the prosecutor. And no, I don't want Kirk to have any more time. No, you know, it was the first time that that a huge turnout for charter amendments because people paid attention. But all I did was that was it. No on 15. And I went everywhere 
in the store in the you know because everything was open in those days and people actually paid attention to the charter the charter amendments and if there's a question that comes from the state the charter comes from the city and county and if they're on the ballot we need to look at them to pay attention and the advantage now of course is that because we can do it at home you can talk about it to your spouse or whoever what does mm -hmm. this mean how does this impact me because if you're in the booth and you read it and they said oh my goodness what does that mean yeah so, so now that you're home you can talk about it mm -hmm. we so, um yeah we're very excited at the party about vote by mail and the convenience that it's provided to people uh we had record turnout numbers we haven't had numbers like this since 1998 in a primary election where 51 percent of registered voters across the, the state voted yeah uh, and that's fantastic not since 1998 have we had that and so we had people voting on things and they had time to look up yes. the candidates and make informed decisions whereas if they had walked into the uh, election day polling place and seeing these charter amendments for the first time uh, they you know are going to skip them uh, mm -hmm. sadly enough and and we are really excited about the opportunity that that some of these charter amendments have and most especially number two uh, to give voice to additional people uh, across the the city well I'm I'm excited about it because, like I said, that is something that you can market successfully with all young people, you know, to take a look at that, mm -hmm. uh, so that if they are interested in uh, Charter Amendment Two, even though they can't vote, but they can surely tell their parents, mm -hmm. vote for that one. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Yeah. So I think this is a marvelous opportunity that, you know, we we tend to think that all of our energy is into the president, as it should be, because that affects everybody for a very long time. Uh, but all of these offices, um, I don't think we know who the prosecutor's name is. Well, I guess since they had such trouble everybody knows about the prosecutor but what who is the prosecutor what does the prosecutor do do we know do we have any idea and how long is his term and if you read the the uh, description of who the chart who the prosecutor can be it's like well that sure narrows the you know the prosecutor has to be somebody that has been in the court and has tried cases for at least the last two years. Well, that sure limits, you know, but nonetheless, that's a difference. But well, what are these offices that we're voting on? What do they mean? How is the city and county different from the state? And we're voting for both members of the city council and members of the legislature. So there's so much to talk about that for young people to have a voice with their parents as they're voting. I like this guy because of this, and I don't like this one because of that. But it's a great opportunity to talk about all of that. What does the mm -hmm. legislature do? What does the city council do? You know, all of those kinds of wonderful things that you get to talk about because you can vote at home. Mm -hmm. And they should. There should be a discussion. I remember I had great love and joy for election day as a young person, as a, let's say like a second grader to maybe sixth grader, you know, going into the booth with my kid, uh, with my dad and, you know, getting lifted up and, you know, to flip the switches. Uh, <laughs> it, was, it was the most wonderful experience um, to, to be a part, you know, oh, flip that one, don't flip that one, flip that yeah. one, don't flip that one. Uh, 
and to, to know that this this vote counted, that it mattered, uh, that it and mattered. that it would yes. make a difference to me, even though I was too young. And so parents and kids can have that experience with the ballots as they arrive in the mail, you know, maybe an assignment of look these people up and tell me about them would be a really pleasant experience in civic engagement, uh, as well as the opportunity to discuss and have a, a debate, a small debate about the pros and the cons and the this is why I'm making this decision. Uh, and one day it'll be your opportunity as well you know at 16 you know sign up to register to vote you know you can do a whole lot of influencing as a 16 year old amongst your friends and amongst your community and if you get on this council because it's 14 to 24 or the age ranges you can do it even more influencing you can play a part in the democratic party uh, as a young person, you can play a part in other civic engagement um, organizations. And we would love to have the skill set of young people. We would love to have the perspectives of young people. And we'd like to pass laws and legislation that uh, disproportionately assist those folks, because oftentimes they are the ones most in need across our community in different uh, districts, city council districts and state uh, representative yeah. districts. Um, we need to know how to contact you mm -hmm. at the Democratic Party. Can you give us a contact a email or for the party or how do we, so if we have sure, young sure. people, how do they connect you? How do they get involved? So the number one way to get involved with the party is to join the Democratic Party. Uh, and you would just go to our website. It's Oahu free. Democrats. It is free. <laughs> and then you get to vote in the presidential primary as well. Uh, and so you go to OahuDemocrats.org uh, and then you find the join button, click the join button and join the party. Uh, to reach me, you can find me at Chris Edwards uh, Hawaii at gmail.com. And then I can help walk you through all of these steps. And we will be doing more programs uh, to help walk people through the questions you were asking. You know, what is the state ledge? What are the laws? How, do, how does that work? How do you get a law passed? And also, what is the city council? And how do they operate? And so we, we do lots of programming to help people better understand, Democrats better understand um, the government around them and how they might be able to influence it uh, to, you know, give, get the better world that we want, affordable housing, climate change. Uh, well, you know, it's been a pleasure spending this time with you and you will come back and talk some more. We've got mm -hmm. just a couple of what, a month or two to get all of this done before the election. Mm -hmm. So you will come back and visit with us again? Absolutely. And I do want to encourage people, if, if I could just have a second, to vote yes on number two and yes. to uh, do a little research uh, to see Make if some you also to say agree. yes on two. Yes. Yes on two. <laughs> That's right. Yes two. Yeah. Uh, and just do a little research. Make sure you're, you're picking the right person for you. Okay. Uh, well, great. Thank you. Thank you so much for spending this time with us. And we'll see you next time. Thanks. Oh, okay. See you next time.